As dawn breaks on this cool May morning, the sun begins to slowly burn off the fog in the Falls Creek Valley, and a plume of coal smoke wafts out of the little engine house in Falls Creek Yard. A new day is about to begin on Dave Birmingham's three-foot gauge Shenango Flume Company Railroad. Formed in the late 1800s, this road was built to haul lumber out of the Pennsylvania mountains. Logging is now a thing of the past here, but the little narrow gauge railroad still operates two or three days a week, handling miscellaneous freight for a handful of customers who still rely on the railroad for their survival. Today, engine number two, a 24-ton Shea, will pull only two cars, a boxcar of finished product from the Coronado Wood Products Factory at Falls Creek and an East Broadtop hopper of coal from Shenango. Both cars are destined for the interchange at Marshburg. The little Shea and her crew go through the time-honored ritual of getting ready for the road. They stop at the old water tank at the east end of the yard to top off the water. Meanwhile, the engineer makes a careful walk-around inspection of his old engine, looking for anything that might cause us any trouble today. After all, she's an old machine with a lot of hard miles on her. When the tank is full and the crew is satisfied that all is well, they go about the task of making up their short train. The boxcar of wood is here at Falls Creek, but the hopper will be picked up on down the line at the coal tipple at Shenango. A unique old side door caboose is coupled to the end of the train for the few passengers who may wish to ride today. There are also a few newspapers aboard the caboose for delivery at Marshburg. The old Shea then has to run around her train to get ready to head west out of Falls Creek. After pumping up the air and getting an air test, the Shea starts west, leaving the yard at a measured pace. At the west end of the yard lies Falls Creek. The railroad spans the creek on an old wooden trestle complete with water barrels in case of fire. These barrels are inspected often, for this little bridge is critical to the road's survival. If it were to burn, the railroad couldn't get into Falls Creek Yard. About a half mile out of the yard, the train passes through Falls Creek and by the Falls Creek Station. As the train heads west out of Falls Creek, the regular breakfast crowd is gathering at Jack's Place, a popular restaurant on Depot Street, close to the tracks. The train crews usually eat here, too. After a short run through the valley, the train arrives at the siding at Shenango. This is where we have to pick up that hopper of coal that's carted for today's train. Since this is the only train on the line today, the crew simply leaves the caboose on the main while they grab the hopper out of the siding and couple it into the train.
There's a grade crossing just west of the switch at the west end of Shenango Siding. We've created a one-car traffic jam here as we move over the crossing while picking up the hopper at the coal tipple. The next city west of Shenango is Augsburg, a bustling little town that's a center of commerce in the Falls Creek Valley. Well, maybe not everyone in Augsburg is bustling, but you get the idea. We don't have any cars to set out in Augsburg today, so the Shea moves through town without stopping. Shortly after passing Augsburg, we leave the Falls Creek Valley and enter the Still River Valley. This is also a very scenic area, with several farmhouses and cabins built near the tracks. It's a beautiful spring day, and these folks are enjoying every minute of it, sitting outside on the porch as our train goes by. There's still a little lumber business in the hills, but the loads are so small that they move by truck or wagon these days. That covered bridge in the distance carries the standard gauge Kinzula Creek Railroad over the Still River. It's early evening when Shea No. 2 crosses the Still River on the railroad's biggest bridge. This all-steel Pratt Truss Bridge is by far the largest bridge on the Shenango Flume Company Railroad. It's only a few more miles from here to Marshburg, and it's a good thing, because our engineer has heard a little extra noise coming from the engine that, that doesn't sound good. He'll take a close look at it in Marshburg. Arriving in Marshburg, the crew cuts away from the caboose and leaves it in the yard. While stopped, our engineer took a close look at the engine and found the source of that noise, a loose cotter key in the valve gear. That'll have to be repaired before the engine goes on the road again. They pulled the train down to clear the crossing in Marshburg and took the engine to the house. Fortunately, engine number three, a 50-ton diesel, was sitting in the engine house when the crew arrived. They simply grab that engine to switch out their train. They shove their cars onto the interchange track and headed back to the house, just barely finishing their day before the hours of service law would have finished it for them. Just another long day on the Shenango Flume Company Railroad. After what you've just seen, you might think that the Shenango Flume Company Railroad is a large O-gauge layout. However, all this action took place on a layout that measures only 10 by 14 feet. This O-gauge layout in a small space is a great example of what can be done with the right attention to both foreground and background detail. In the foreground, numerous little details fill out the scenes, showing the life beyond the railroad, where everyday people go about their everyday lives. But it's the background scenes on this layout that are unusual. Dave uses actual photographs taken in his travels around the country as part of the background. He has skillfully blended them with the foreground scenes to add a tremendous feeling of depth to scenes that are only two feet deep. 
The Shenango Flume Company Railroad is a throwback to a simpler time when the pace of life was a bit slower, and it's a great example of O-gauge in a small space. <laughs>